Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Come to you, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. My name is John Mark Colley, and joining me, as always, are my two co-hosts, Garrett and Will. Guys, how are you today? What up, yo? Doing up? well. Yes. Doing well. Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, before we get started on our review of episode 11 of and or the penultimate, penul- is that how you say that? Penultimate, 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 penopolis, penultimate, penultimate, yes, words. <laughs> um, we were hit with some big news, uh, recently with the announcement of Bob Iger being named, renamed once again, CEO of Disney. Um, This is not exactly, it's Star Wars adjacent, but it's still, I mean, I think it will, I think it affects, affects everything in the Disney brand because he will now be the, you know, the head honcho of the entire, um, you know, what, what can we expect from a, Iger ran Disney now, do you think? Well, first of all, I think that the, you know, one of the things I've been saying since, you know, you know, there's a lot, you know, being a park goer and a big Disney parks fan, um, there's been a lot of uh, shade thrown at Bob Chapek, um, yeah. particularly by cast members, Imagineers, that kind of thing. And Disney fans, will, and you know, in part of it. Uh, as far as the parks go, you know, from strictly from a dollars and cents thing, uh, they, they've actually made money. They've actually been doing pretty well. Of course, they raise, they've charged everything. They've taken stuff away that was once free and charged for it. So you know, there's all sorts of things that they've done um, from a, strictly again from a business perspective. I get it. I understand it. Um, but it was their streaming service. And 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 the and the the issue with that that really caused Disney stock to plummet. Um, that among other things unrelated to the parks. But um, so I'm I'm very curious to see you know this move and how it might affect uh, the Disney Plus ser- you, know, the, you know streaming service Hulu ESPN. You know are they going to are they going to, you know, change the model by which by which they release things? Are they going to add more things? You know, that's kind of where my thinking is taking me right now. That it's um, going to be, or, or are they going to charge more for it? You know, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Yeah, Dis- and Disney Plus is actually probably one of the more expensive streaming platforms that's out there. Um, yeah. It's because I mean it's it's what seventy nine eighty dollars a year now, or something like that. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't well, know I if it, that. I know it was. It came. It started <laughs> off at, at the, as the least expensive. Well, and then it, from an annual perspective, yeah. But um, there are some platforms that are that are decreasing. Well, some of a lot of them, like Netflix and stuff like that, have have increased their their costs. But they don't charge on an annual basis; they charge on a yearly basis. But oh. I just saw something posted on uh, our local. Did you say they don't charge on an annual basis; they charge on a yearly basis. Isn't Sorry. that the same thing? No, I, I'm, not- <laughs> <laughs> it's- I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you out, but I'm I'm so tired right now that I almost I let just, that go. I just realized that that's 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 almost the the uh, the verbal equipment uh, equivalent of the. Your and your, yeah, yes. right. <laughs> ah, so, uh, what I was gonna say is, um, like I just saw something on on our local ABC affiliates Instagram page, um, where they are promoting that for uh, as a part of a Black Friday sale for Hulu because Hulu is officially owned by Disney. Um, mm-hmm. That if you uh, if you sign up for Hulu on our, their Black Friday deal. For the next year, it would be one dollar and ninety nine cents a month for for twelve months. Okay, and I'm like, well, that's wow. definitely that's crazy. Yeah, but, yeah, that's that's insane because uh, it's that's just under twenty uh, four dollars for the entire, entire year. year. There's a lot of content for that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm sure. I'm I'm really curious to see where it goes. I know that you know my my observation with Bob Iger has always been that you know he's he's been more of a you know and you know, look you can talk to anybody on the street and one person loves the guy, one person hated the guy, you know, and 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 I think Chapek kind of got more hate than love. Just honest. Um, I didn't really have a problem with him per se, except you know he he kind of ran everything with a business mind only and not a creative mind. Mm-hmm. I think Iger was a little bit more balanced in that sense and i think that's and i don't think the disney company is bringing him in to um to do anything more than just kind of set the you know set things a little bit less wobbly straighten the ship if you will while they so you think he's going to be more of an interim ceo just kind of in there to or do you i mean you know i, I well here's the thing because he's, i'll be honest like the the guy that was in before i don't even know who he was like Iger was the last person I remember because I think Iger was more, maybe more out there. Like you saw him more. He was yeah. more well, Bob, visible. Bob Chapek didn't really spend a whole lot of time on social media. Didn't really care what was being said about him on social media. He yeah. was there yeah. to to kind of right the ship and, and and get business booming again, especially with regards to the parks after the pandemic. Right. And yeah. It was like. The way that everything played out is two years ago, Iger stepped down as the CEO. He retired and he basically dumped everything on on JPEG. And JPEG was forced to bring everything back, you know, up to up to snuff. And he's been working on that. But at the same time, his whole stance has been like, look, we are an entertainment company. First and foremost, we have no business in anything political let's let's back away from the politics and people got upset about that for a variety of different reasons whether it was right or wrong but he he wanted to focus on the entertainment aspect of what the business does and um putting everything else aside so he could focus on that and because of that um the it created an issue where he started uh, having to basically cow to some of the employees uh, because he's only made one or two posts deliberately on social media. And one of them was some kind of formal apology that was required of him by the shareholders. And I don't even remember what that was all about. All I know is it just, it, it was politically motivated. Right. Yeah. So, oh, well, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. The Bob, I gotta be careful which but Chapek was um you know he was and he didn't like being called this but he was a he was a suit he was a numbers guy you know mm-hmm. that's what he was brought in to do mm-hmm. and uh you know he came from consumer products i mean the, the guy you know he understands that aspect of it he's good at what he does he just wasn't a good, he just wasn't a fit for disney yeah you know when you, when you think about a company i mean let's think about it this way how many people you know there's only been a handful of people to come out past Walt Disney himself. Okay, I know he's been dead for you know sixty years, but yeah, there's really only been a handful of people that have run the entire company. You know, you can count them on one hand, which is or, or just about two hands since Walt Disney himself passed away. There was and, there was Roy, there was Michael Eisner. Well, Bob yeah, Eisner, Bob, Ron Bob Miller was it? Like Ron Brian. Miller was in there. Yeah, Ron Miller was in there in the middle. And That's I right. think there might have been an interim, and then yeah, Michael Eisner, uh, right, Bob Iger, and now then Bob Chapek. So really, only like five. So you know, when you think about that, you know, the, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an tough, it's a tough role to take on. And remember, Walt Disney he didn't even do it. what he did. He was the he was the complete creation uh, creative character. He was the creative person. And then he had his brother, Roy, to kind of help with the finances behind him. So now you get to this point now in present day or close to present day, even Michael Eisner. You know, these were people that came in that, you know, really are responsible for making Disney the powerhouse that it is. Made Walt Disney World become the most popular destination to travel to in the world. Made the Disney, you know, Disney movies, brought back animation, brought back, uh, you know, the whole I fan the idea of like family entertainment. And then yeah. Iger, he came in and just, you know, and en- you know, just enveloped, you know, put put the warm blanket of Disney around Marvel, the Muppets, Star Wars, Lucasfilm. Um, 
you know, and so many Pixar. other little things. Pixar, thank you. That was the one I couldn't think of. And he did all of that, and then now all of that becomes part of the Disney bubble. <clears throat> and now you have the Disney MC, you have the MCU, you have, you know, five new movies, five new streaming shows for, for Lucasfilm Star Wars, not to mention a new indie movie coming out, Willow, the series re- returning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's just so much content that he, that, that Iger was, uh, I'm not saying he was directly responsible for, but he led the charge to get that to happen. So, yeah. and no, to say nothing about bringing X-Men back and, uh, for Fantastic Four back into the MCU, work striking a deal with Sony. They had Spider Man. You know, there's a lot that yeah. that he accomplished under his leadership, uh, including again, the, uh, the assimilation of 20th Century Fox. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think that the the the, the shareholders and the board kind of felt like JPEG it just it just seemed like everything JPEG touched was just a disaster. I I know that I'm sure he did some good things too. I'm sure that there was some bad, a lot of bad things Iger did, but I just think that there were far more hits than misses with Iger under the eyes of the board. And so at this point, they're just trying to get their stock prices to not tank anymore. So they brought Iger back to do that. Will Iger, you know, right the wrongs, you know, straighten the ship, whatever, you know, time will tell. Um, will there be any incredible changes? I don't know. I don't know if this affects us in the Star Wars world very much. I mean, I know that he was kind of hand off, hands offish once uh, once things got going, and he just left it up to Lucasfilm. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think I, I'd imagine that will that will. That I mean, continue. that seems to be kind of the the Disney model for all of the the bit, all of the uh, things that they kind of have bought was to be you know, hands off and let them almost run as their own entity. You know, Marvel, while it's under the Disney banner, kind of runs as its own entity. And yeah. Star Wars kind of, Lucasfilm kind of runs as its own entity. Right. And, you know, to use a historical model, it's almost like a um, feudal a feudal system. You have all these little fiefdoms in the Disney empire and the Disney kingdom. And mm-hmm. then, you know, Disney is the is the overlord to all of it, and then they kind of just just do their thing, and are just kind of required to, you know, give them licensing almost the licensing fees. Right, right. So, I, I'm, 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 I'm is kind of what? No, go ahead, Jack. Go ahead, Garrett. I was gonna say Disney as an entity has has kind of over the last few years has kind of been like the not to mix uh, uh, IPs here, but uh, they've kind of been the the Borg of the entertainment in this industry. <laughs> Resistance is futile. I I definitely concur. I for once welcome our mouse overlord. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I I'm I'm very I'm I'm for as a Disney fan. Uh, I will say that I'm um I was not a fan of JPEG. I didn't hate the guy. I I knew he was just doing he was doing what he was asked to do. I think that he just did it like like a you know like a bulldozer as opposed to being a little more delicate. And he just didn't know how to deal with people. He just didn't know how to deal with the changing times. Um, I do think Iger um, made a strategic move to leave the company when he did. Uh, I think he didn't want to have to handle the whole, you know, the unknowns of the pandemic. So he kind of pushed that off on JPEG and it makes, you know, JPEG look bad, makes Iger look like he had nothing to do with it. So who knows? None of us were in the room. We don't know exactly, but I will say that uh, I think uh, some people are breathing a little easier today, knowing that Iger is going to be around for a little bit. And then, you know, they'll do a proper search for, uh, you know, a true successor. Um, You know, a lot of of people talk about Josh DeMauro, who's the kind of the guy in charge of the parks directly. Uh, He's very very well liked among the cast member community and whatnot. But, um, he doesn't have a lot of experience outside of the parks. So I'm not sure if they're going to try to train him or something else. But uh, by the way, forgive my, if you're hearing noise in the background, it's my family. They're watching the final episode of Dancing with the Stars, and apparently it's uh, pretty wild in there. <laughs> so speaking of Disney properties. But anyway, so why don't we, go, why don't we get to Andor? What else? All right, about Andor. Our, Andor. Our, 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 the reason for us 
be yeah. meeting here tonight. The real reason for us meeting the here. The real one. Yes. Daughter of Ferrix. Daughter of Ferrix. Yes. Um, I mean, just straight off, I think overall, as we're as we're getting down to the second to last episode, next week being the last episode, um, I think I think one thing this this series has done good for has done good for me is a good balancing act of making sure that no one's story that is being told that you're not feeling like any particular story is being left out. Like they're giving good amount of equal time for each story and building them to working together in a way that seems natural and organic. Like you can see all these different storylines starting to come together, starting to meld together and it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like you're just pulling something out of the air. You know, I know that was one of the critiques for, Book of Boba Fett was you spent two episodes where Boba Fett wasn't in it. We talked about that about you know when we did our review of of Book of Boba Fett, but in this one it seems like they're doing a good job, a good balancing act. Like it doesn't feel like Andor story is being you know left out any for you know so they can do more of of any of the other people's stories. You know it's a good. A good a good balancing act. Yeah, okay. I, I would agree. With that. I would I would too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I I'm, it, I'm I'm having a different. Just my whole feeling on this show is like opening up different areas in my psyche mm-hmm. uh, as to you know being a Star Wars fan and and what that means. And um, I'm okay with it. It it doesn't it doesn't you know, I mean, you know, you know, we're looking at something that's like, well, it doesn't have laser battles, it doesn't have a lot of, doesn't have Jedi, it doesn't have this, and you know, and I that never really bothered me. You know, as long as it's a good story, if I'm hearing, if I'm seeing good storytelling going taking place, mm-hmm. I uh, and I'm captivated, and that seems to be what's doing it, even if it is a, uh, a you know, quote unquote, slow burn, as they've said. Uh, I think this episode, the specific episode, kind of returned to a a slightly a slower burn, just because uh, you know of what they were dealing with. But yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm really, <clears throat> I'm liking that it's here. I am liking that we have this as a as a diff- like an adult kind of Star Wars mm-hmm. that's more dra- more dramatic, less you know. Yeah, uh, it's. Less it's, bombastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to, you know, that opening scene where they're just hanging by on that cliff wall and, um, you know, just fighting for their lives and just. Now, did, did are we to assume that all those guys that went swimming into the water, none of them I don't survived? Know. I don't know. I. Well, I mean, they even talk about that. They even kind of mentioned that, like, like you know, yeah, I at the how end. people got out. And I'm like, yeah, where did, I mean, I guess you just, you know, you don't really look around for everybody else. You're just swimming, 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 and you come to shore, to a shore, because it kind of all kind of fanned out, right, in that, about that bird's eye view of them all at the end of the previous episode. And where do they all end up? I mean, I don't know, like, did, did, was it just... Andor and uh, Melchi that ended up on that um, one beach. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, it's yeah, it's not uncommon. I mean, when you have like stuff like that happening, where people tend to dis- disperse as much as they possibly can because uh, they they yeah. don't want to get caught. It's it's far it's gonna, easier. It's easier, to, it's easier all to, together. To, yeah, uh, it's hard remind- to catch you, you if you go all the different directions. I'm reminded of though, um, Oh, the great escape. Did you guys ever see that movie? Mm-hmm. Yep. With, uh, you know, when, when they all got, you know, the 52, the 52 kid people who got out or 54 people who got out, um, you know, they, there's not too many places for them to go. You know, they go into the woods and then they have to go to the train station or they have to go to the border or they have to take a boat and they have to go, you know. So so they ended up like kind of getting up into small groups, but most of them ended up getting picked up, you know. Yeah. So um, they, they should have they should have uh, they should have pulled a um, pulled something from the Muppets and traveled by map. 
<laughs> we can travel by map. No, I, uh, I, uh, I got to give a quick shout out to, uh, he hasn't officially been on the show before, but he's a, he's a, a friend of the show, Facebook friend of the show, uh, Mike Quinn for doing his first official um, character where his voice was actually heard. For those of you who don't know, you might not know, Mike Quinn was the puppeteer for Nine Numb in yes. the original series. Oh, and he was oh he's, a friend of of, he's a friend of the show? I didn't know he that. Has, I, I have him on Facebook. I've talked with him before. Oh, I, cool. He's never actually been on the show before, but I've had a chance to talk with him over Facebook Messenger several times. Awesome It'd be great guy. to have him. I know. I'm, I've been trying to. Um, I might you know, see if we can get him on sometime. But uh, he was Get one me of the back A-list. for that. Get me back for that episode if you do, yeah. please. He was one I have, of the. Uh, I have many questions for him. He was one of the aliens. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, and oh, the two. Actually, the two. The two. He was. I can't remember which one he was, but they actually. Uh, you got to use his voice. He said and they the used his time. voice. They said ah. it was the first time they used his voice for a Star Wars character. I, I am so glad um, you mentioned that. I did not know that. I, I would. I just want to talk to him because he knew. Uh, not only did he know Frank Oz, he knows Frank Oz personally. He also knew Jim um, Henson. Jim Henson. He right. was trained by Jim Henson. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. No, there's a no. That's a that would be a great conversation yeah. to have. I mean, yeah. he's been a very active puppeteer in the yeah. business. Yeah. Very, um, very awesome. But yeah, that well, those characters. But um, before we get to that, though, we got to talk about poor uh, emo V two emo with his, oh. his oh the grieving God, droid. Such a oh. scene. Oh. I know. That I was poor like, droid that is so. Well, that almost rivaled. I know. It's just it was so, so childlike. Yeah. Like, like, you know, you know he's been around for probably quite a while, but still he has this childlike innocence about him. And yeah. not understanding, you know, what's going on. Anybody who's had a, a child who has children and has had someone in their family pass away that their child knew know how difficult that is to explain yeah. that to a to a small child. And, you know, that was just so hard. Well, that whole thing of, of, you know. They wanted to clear the room for him, you know, if he wanted to yeah. be. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I have it on kind of like just to remind me because I watched it almost a week ago. So, mm-hmm. um, but oh, so that's just. And then, and, and then the chair, and the empty chair with the, mm-hmm. with the cane. It's like, it's like Tiny Tim. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I see a crutch in the. In the corner, I never thought I'd die over a robot. Never. I know. <laughs> well, you know, he's he's like if Wally and uh, Vincent from Black Hole had a baby, have a, had a baby droid. <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, and the, and the two and the two of them have a lot of, you know, the emotion of both of those droids too. So just, yeah, it's oh really gosh, funny. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. And then finding out what they, what the people, of what they do with the uh, the citizens of Barrack. I love uh, they that. They become part of the those city. Kind of, uh, yeah, those kind oh, of I want to do that. Really cool. yeah. I thought that's fantastic. I'm like, man, they should so do that, like, everywhere. It'd be yeah. better for the environment. It would be so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. that was just so, that was a cool, cool little touch. And it brought this sense of, like, I don't know what to say realism, but it felt like something like grounded, like something like, you know, yeah, it just felt very, very in, in keeping with what we know. And it made Ferrick seem like the culture seem more real and more, you know, Again, like this was the specific. So every specific one of these, every one of these shows these different series just builds the world more. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Even even bringing in the religious aspect with Chandrilla. Oh, you saw the daughter, all the, her daughter in that thing, they're all chanting the old ways, the old way. I will say one, 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 (laughs) I'm, I'm sorry. We bring them, we're up to the fishermen now. And I'm just laughing at the fact that, I, I had to watch it three times before I understood what they were saying. Yeah, yeah, I told, yeah. It's it's almost scary. like you know, the people are like, "You think Yoda was hard to understand?" <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we're gonna give you these two fishermen, these salty types. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, and even I mean, you're you're just kind of wondering like, what's going on? Are they going to try and eat them? Are they going to try and yeah, they, that's with what's the going net. on? I know. And then I love the appearance of the quad jumper, quad jumper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where you know I'm liking that they do a little bit of, um, you know, they they. I feel I I enjoy when they're building the world, both forward and backward. Okay, um, you know, obviously the quad jumper made a brief appearance in the Force Awakens, and I like that. You know, they're they're not they're not like you know dis you know forgetting about the sequel trilogy any more than they're not forgetting about the prequel trilogy. You know, they seem yeah. to be embracing the entire world, and I think it's smart. Yeah. So I yeah. enjoy that. Although I do have a question when they when he went back to um, Space Miami. Um, uh, how long was he gone? Because he couldn't have been gone that long. Because that that I'd say that maybe a couple was, of weeks. Yeah, because the, the 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 box that he put up there, the safe that he put up up there, was still there. And is it like just open air? Did you just like walk in and like? I, to the same I mean, hotel I'm, room? I'm guessing that my 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 answer to that would be that it's a cheap hotel and they don't really clean it that well yeah. they just yeah. kind of they kind of sweep the floor change the sheets from one room to the next <laughs> and then same thing with the towels yeah. and you know that's that's it that's what you're getting yeah. um so so the fact that he had a thing like tucked way up top high on a on a above a, a high unit uh does make does make sense <laughs> to me that it would most likely still be there um but yeah that's uh crazy yeah. Well, just the fact that he's sneaking around while someone else is sleeping in the room. So I'm just like, I know. Oh, dude, I just, again, heck? it took me a second viewing to realize that there were two people in the room. Oh. Or, or was it more than two? I don't know. Le- there's I, at I, least two. Maybe three. There's at least two. There could have been a third in there. Yeah. So uh, it's just, just The galaxy's hysterical. full of debauchery. You know, hey, it was Space Miami. What happens in Space Miami stays in Space Miami. So it's all it's all good. <laughs> so uh yeah. But I guess, you know, it is it was nice to see them kind of formulate this relationship between Iandor and Melchi, you know, and, and so many people were like why is this guy important? And I'm like, did you not watch Rogue One? You know, I mean <laughs> but it's not like he was a he wasn't like it wasn't like it was, you know, Chariot or Baze or something like that. It was like he yeah. didn't, he wasn't part of their team, you know. But, uh, but, but they put him in there, which I thought was great. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the consistency that they're doing to keep in, in the tie in to, to Rogue One. It makes it, it makes it feel a little bit more organic, a little bit more mm-hmm. um, planned out. Yeah. And we're seeing more and more with um, Mon Mothma. We're seeing, you know, I think we're slow. I think we're moving to her, you know, having to, you know, flee and, you know, kind of form. You're seeing the, we're seeing the beginnings of the form that forming of the rebellion, obviously, but I think we're definitely getting towards, you know, her having to, having to flee Coruscant and leave yeah. and go, um, which is going to be, I think, is going to be kind of, kind of cool. You know, coming up to the scene now with the uh, with Mon Mothma coming into the shop and talking Yo. to the assistant to the girl. Yeah, and I'm just like, I'm I'm amazed because like, I don't like that girl. I don't like the lady, the assistant. You know, first of all, she's the one who wants to go and set, you know, kill Cassian. So that's going to come to a head. Yeah, uh, probably next episode, and um. You know, oh no, not my mouth, but the the cousin, the, the, cousin, the other girl, yeah, yeah the blonde, so and yeah, and they're talking, and I just, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just these people to me are, it's like what Luthen said in the previous episode. You know, they have sacrificed everything. You know, yeah. they they will, they are not good people. They are not oh, kind oh, people. Well, they're not. Let's let's talk about that. Talk about sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, Luthen willing to sacrifice an entire. Not just one person, but an entire group of and telling like, 
you know, you know, going to um, what's his name? They're gonna go to such great lengths. Saul, yeah, go to Saul, going to go to going to Saul, and and say, you know, basically telling him like, yeah, you don't want to do this because he's walking into a trap, and say, and then basically saying, yeah, I'm not gonna tell him. I'm not I mean, gonna because those those you know how many people are gonna be sacrificed in that it's going to be for the greater good. Right. You know, in yeah. his mind at least. You know, that. he's willing to throw, you know, literally, you know, have people killed. Like there's no doubt that the that the people are going into that into that battle for that attack are gonna get slaughtered. Exactly. And he's perfectly fine with it because in his mind it's for the greater good. You know, to use a Star Trek uh, star uh, to cross IPs, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many. And in this case, the the lives of the few outweigh the I, lives I, of the like, many. I think you I think you've got that backward. The the needs of the yeah. many outweigh many the needs, outweigh the needs, of, the needs of, the of the few. Yeah. 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 Right. And that's yeah. uh yeah, that's that's definitely a uh, a truism at this point in this episode. And you know, it's you know, but again, these are not you know, rebellions are not formed with kindness. You know, there, no. there, there, there's, no. there's a lot behind, you know, kind of hiding behind it. And yeah. it's fascinating to see the way it forms. Yeah. You and know, I, the, I mean, know. one thing we've talked about this before that, you know, Star Wars in the past has always been very black and white. You know, especially if you look at the original trilogy, it's very, you know, the, the rebels are the good guys, the empire is the bad guys. And, you know, the rebels are fighting for truth, justice in the Republic way, you <laughs> know, um, and the Empire, you know, space Nazis and all that. And I think, you know, Rogue One and, and especially Andor now is doing a really good job of showing those gray areas that, you know, the rebels weren't all sunshine and rainbows and kumbaya. Right. That. No, no, they're not, and then you know it's a, it's a gray area, and you know they're being very good and showing how people could on the other side could view the rebels, you know the the, the alliance as terrorist, as something bad. You know, if you're in the you know in the area where the rebels are doing these attacks and you know setting up these ambushes, you know there's you know. You're you you know you got family members that are being killed on both sides and yeah you know, yeah well that's you know and, that's war you know well and the 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 funny thing about this is that we're starting to see just how strained the individual relationships are going to be uh, mm -hmm. because of you know people's allegiances and because uh, like you know Mon Mothma's you know, having uh, these conversations with Vel and, you know, while both she and her sister are, uh, you know, in agreement that the rebellion needs to take place, that there needs to be some movement towards mm -hmm. uh, defeating the empire, their, their understanding of how things should be done and, and what lives should be spent and all that are drastically different. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely um oh go ahead just like an emo uh b2 emo you know asking the friend you could stay you know oh, like he's trying to take that another heart yeah i'm you like could stay. and then he got like, all pepped up and he's like all right i'll stay one night you know it's like oh my god it's like a toddler yeah, definitely. You know, and then and then poor um, Banks, Banks getting tortured that, that that torture. I forgot all about that oh, with, the, oh with the with the screens. Oh, oh. Yeah, that. And can we talk about the worst Imperial spy in the history of the Imperial spy? The most ob obvious <laughs> Imperial spy that's on Ferrix. Oh, oh, right, right. Like everyone's like, "Yep, that's a spy." Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I do like I do like that they at least take the effort to have him dress. In like civilian, you know, yeah, you know, at least try to look like he belong, like he, like he's not out of place. Yeah, um, they went, they went to that effort. They went to that effort. 
But beyond that, that was like the basic effort. Because after that, yeah. he's, he's the most conspicuous spy ever. It's like, I mean, every, it's that's the kind of it, going back to the uh, the idea of James Bond. Everybody knew James Bond was a spy. He walks in, they're like, "Oh, who are you?" He's like, "Oh, I'm Bond." Doesn't use a cover name. Doesn't use an alias. No. Doesn't use any kind of backstory. Nothing. He just walks in, and I'm like, "Dude, you're you're throwing out your real name. What is wrong?" With you. Well, I mean, there is there is the fan theory that Bond is a is a code name. That it's that's one of the Could theories be. that Bond is the actually not his real name, but it oh. is his cover name. Guys, that that would that's just one of so many things that is just weird about the James Bond stories. You know, yeah. I mean, let, let alone the, the the you know the the villain like taking you know. Giving away the entire plan while you know the, oh, the, that's, the a, that's a that's a classic the classic trope of you know Bond yeah. being in some elaborate I love monologuing you know yeah me- method of killing yeah yeah that, now I, I, I noticed one thing is that I have liked other than uh, Wolf Lore, Lo, Wolf Lauren Lauren ah, the ISB leader <laughs> yeah. um the guy who's the head of the ISB Wolf. Yeah, I can't remember that guy's name. Yularen. 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 Yeah. Wolf Yularen. Wolf Yularen. We haven't had any original, you know, anybody from the either, you know, characters from the original trilogy show up. Other, well, Mon Mothma, obviously. But other than that, you know, we haven't had a lot of, you know, which I kind of like. You know, I think, you know, it's good to have. A we got to build the world. You got to build yeah. the world. It has to be bigger than what what we're used to. You know, that in order to do that, you yeah. got to limit. You don't have to have none. I think I like that. That's Mon Mothma. I like yeah. that uh, Wolf Yularen was represented, but yeah. I'm glad that they didn't just make him the one that was in charge of the sect. You know, like they yeah. they had that other guy that did that, and and Wolf was kind of like the one kind of overseeing the whole thing. Yeah. Um, this whole and, bit with, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. And I mean the fact that you know we haven't seen we you know, we've had mention of Palpatine, but we haven't seen him, which I right. think is perfectly fine because it, it would be goes, very reclusive at this point. Yeah, and it goes into what we kind of has been kind of established within the original trilogy was that at this point he had kind of retreated in and was letting the the imperial governors and kind of everything kind of run the day to day business of the empire. While he was doing his Sith thing and kind right, of yeah. ruling from afar, true, <clears throat> you know, yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about the daughter, uh, Mon Mothma's daughter, mm-hmm. and her. You yeah. know, I, I have her I, I, earlier in our episodes reviewing the episodes. I uh, kind of theorized that he she might be like somebody who's going to turn on her or something of that nature. Yeah. I, I don't think that is where this is going. I mean, I could be wrong. It could happen that way, but um, I think now that they're going to, she's going to do the whole, you know, betrother. So she's, you know, like with the criminal's son. So that, and I think the daughter's going to want that. (coughs) You know, it seems like her disconnect with her mom is just, you know, standard, you know, teenage angst. Mm-hmm. And and being you know a kind of against your parents, but it just so happens that her 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 mother Mon Mothma is more of a liberal, you know, you know more of a democratic, if you will, and uh, you know the daughter is leaning more towards the old ways, the more what did they say, the like the old traditional, the more conservative. traditional conservative. Yeah kind of that thing. So I think she'd be totally down with, you know, the whole uh, betrothal thing that, it, you know, if and when Mon Mothma presents it. So, yeah, but we still see. There may be more to that story. There may be more of this, you know, I don't know if they're going to get to everything tomorrow or tomorrow when the next episode comes out or not tomorrow, Wednesday, but, you know, we'll see. And might have to one thing, on one thing, I we have, I need to go uh, back a little bit because I made a, and I don't know if we talked about, I don't remember if we talked about it, but one thing I mis, I mistook uh, with one of the previous episodes, the first time they went and saw, he saw, went to Saul, I, oh, I thought initially thought there was an X-wing that was out there. The, oh, it's the, a headhunter. 
It's a Z95. Yeah, yeah. the Z29 right. Headhunter. Yeah, Z9, yeah, Z95. The, yeah, the Headhunter. Yeah, at first I was like, oh, it's an X-Wing. Then I, then I saw something like, no, that's a, that's a Z95. So, which shows it's cool that that was that you know that that ship is you know being made canon. You know the the uh, the precursor to the X-Wing being out there. So that's kind of cool to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see what. Oh, now yeah, we got that. We got to talk about the brief scene with uh, what's his name and his annoying mother. Uh, oh, oh like Cyril. yeah, Cyril. Cyril, thank you. Cyril, um, Cyril, talking to his old, his old uh, security buddy. Yeah, yeah. Just basically giving I mean, information I'm... about, just getting him to know that, you know that. Uh, Cassian's mother died, right? That all that information mm-hmm. is getting passed along to everybody, and everyone's going to return. Which I always, I mean, like, wow, is he that important? I guess he is. So, yeah. What I, what I'm, like, I have expected Cyril to just like when his mother was sitting there observing and just you know kind of looming behind him about the call, and she makes that snide little comment at the end of it, like. I, like I half expected it just the way with the music and the, the, the way he was looking, like I half expected him to just walk into the bedroom or whatever room she was in and just clunk her over the head and just right. finally be done. Yeah. Like I'm waiting for that one scene to happen because I feel like he, I feel like he's really leaning towards finally just offing his mom because she's been yeah. driving him. Yeah. He, 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 he has, he has some, uh, uh, psychotic leanings. There's a real Norman Bates here going. Yeah, here. yeah. Although there's, Norman Bates was kind of like there was an incestual thing going on there too, sort of. So that's not that. He just yeah. uh, doubt, outright hates his mom. So. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, so we'll see. We'll see. Well, yeah. We'll see what we'll happens. See. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, I just. You know, the, you know, looking at this and all the different, um, you know, again, I, I keep saying world building. I just love, you know, the look of everything. Like, you know, it shows him, you know, going back to that hotel in Space Miami to open up just the box that he opened up and, you know, everything. It was such with the credits and yeah, everything. It was the just such a and the weapon. It just had yeah. such a great and the manifest. He kept the manifest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And I, I like that that conversation at the end uh, with him and um, yeah, you said the guy's name, the guy he escaped with, Melchi, 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 and Melchi saying, you know, we have to tell people, we have to, you know, let people know what's going on, and then you know, kind of that, you know, parting of ways where they know they have to part ways, but. Yeah, you know the 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 you know this, and one person pointed out uh, on Screen Crush. They pointed this out when you hear the opening um, song, the opening uh, thing for 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 Andor. How each yeah. one it's building. Yeah, I yeah, still, like, still it's, I'm it's still like not. Longer. Yeah, I'm still not a fan of it though. Still not yeah. liking it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I, it's building to what. What what essentially? And again, this is just my opinion. Building to what essentially amounts is not much. Yeah. Can either of you sing the melody? No, no, no. Can you hum it? No, no. Mandal Mandalorian. Da 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 Boom! Da, 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 da. Da, 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 Boom! Da, da, da. I could do them both. Yeah. Okay. I can't do. Well, you're also you're also a, a band. All right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I'm. You're the music I, guy. Okay, I'm the music guy. I'll give you that. But I'm the music guy, and I still can't do Andor. So think about that. True. True. <laughs> okay, that's fair because I mean, yeah, sure, I play guitar and, and bass, but yeah, it, but it's also I, I'm I'm running on very little sleep today, and mm. my brain doesn't want to do anything. I'm with you, pal. It's all right. No, I just, I mean, and again, I, and, and some people are talk, like going nuts over it. And, and again, I just think it's a style of composition 
that is used under, you know, for TV and movies that I just am not, yeah. it doesn't resonate with me. That's basically oh, all enough. I can say. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, um, um, I mean, I do appreciate we... that it's building though. I have to say yeah, that. Yeah, I do that, appreciate. What they were saying was that like the first, the first episode is just, you know, a couple of instruments then they add, you know, a little bit more. Then they add a little bit more, and each one is kind of layering, is kind of layering on with all these different instruments and built and building up. Can we, um, can we just talk for a second about the fact that Andor, when he's mourning the loss of his mother, is staring out at the beach at, at the ocean, and it is a reflection of, or a, a, at least a callback to the way he stares out the water. At the end of Rogue One. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. Like foreshadowing. Ooh, definitely. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of foreshadowing going on, and it's, yes. it's done well. Oh yeah. yeah, not. It's not. I wouldn't call it slammed over the head. Just you know. no. So, but so what do we? Okay, so. So we're getting into what are our predictions, our thoughts, our ideas about what will be happening in. I definitely think next episode you'll see everyone kind of come together in one way. You know, maybe not like Mon Mothma there, but I do. But I think I think, yeah, I think you'll see. You know, I don't know how much closure we'll get with the story because things as we're getting um, a second season. But I definitely think you will see. I think you'll see closure with 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 um, creepy guy. Um, I think something will happen with that. Um, but I think you'll see, you know, building towards. I think this episode is definitely building towards the the foundation of the rebellion. Yeah, um, I would agree. It's just a question of which one of the side characters. You know, obviously we know Andor is going to come out of it, and we know Mon Mothma is going to come out of it. But other than that, it's Melchi. kind of... Melchi will come out of it. You think Melchi will come out of it? Yeah. He has to come out of it, because he's, 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 he's with him in Rogue One. So... Yeah. yeah. So those um, those those three we know are coming out of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping yeah. for B2 Emo. Yeah. Saw Gerrera, if, if Saw Gerrera ends up with it. Yeah, I'm hoping for B2 I, Emo, too. But... Uh, if you don't see him later, we're wondering why. I why wasn't he? My prediction is Cyril does not come out. He probably just didn't recharge. I think I, – I, I hope it comes out. I hope B2 Emo comes out because I want to see B2 Emo yeah. and K2SO. Oh. That will be like the new R2 and 3PO next next yeah. year. Just <laughs> for you. Know, you. I, I don't need... them having a conversation with R2. I want to be in the room for that conversation. Oh. I want them in the room with R2 and 3PO. That would yeah. just be, you know, oh my god, that would be phenomenal. That would be gold, gold. <laughs> it would. Only K two S O and R two would be on, on the same level because they would both be purposely trying to annoy three uh, PO. Yes. Although B two B two Emo does speak speak words, so you know. Yeah, this is true, and he would um, probably be he, he would probably be just like a, a, a you know like. Uh, avoiding that part of the conversation because he's worried about whatever else he's worried about. Yeah. Um, exactly. He's super interested. Yeah. But like I was saying, I think I, I predict Cyril will not come out. I think Cyril Cyril dies. Okay. In the next episode. That's my prediction. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised. And as much as I, as much as I like the I like him. If um, Luthen doesn't die in this next episode too, I don't know if he's signed I'm on for episode what two. With Dedra. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll see. I think it. she's gonna. I think she's gonna continue to be the the main antagonist of episode of uh, season two. I think that is gonna continue. I think that's gonna be you know that will continue into season into season two. Um, and I think season two will focus a lot on just the, you know, now that we've built the rebellion, I think you're going to bring, I think that's going to you know, have a bigger focus on the sister in right. season two. Cause we haven't, other than a few mentions here and there, 
you know, in the you know, in the first few episodes, there hasn't really been much mention of her. Right. So right. I think that's going to be, you know. Oh, one. I'm sorry. I just. I'm. You know. I don't know why I didn't do this for the since the beginning. I just have it on in on mute in the background. Yeah. Just to th- remind me of things to talk about. Let's talk about uh, Luthen's ship. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. That one. Yeah. Uh, lightsaber ship. The, with the, uh, you know, that, the first yeah. thing I thought was, was, was like prequel trilogy, prequel trilogy, prequel trilogy. Have you tried spinning? That's a neat trick. That's a neat trick. Right. And it was, yeah, but with Darth Maul's lightsabers on each side. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hmm. Well, I, I love, I love the, um, uh, someone pointed out the, uh, made a joke about the, um, the, um, uh, the jamming, the jamming, uh, thing the that ship. he had. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Uh, Star Wars. Uh, uh, Spaceballs, I mean. Spaceballs. We, we've we been Raspberry. Raspberry. I hate Raspberry. Nobody gives me the Raspberry. Raspberry. Oh. That was a cool we, skip, we need to do. We need to do, not to go off, but we do need to do sometime yeah. a review of Space, just a review of Spaceballs. Yes. I do it more like a rewatch. Rewatch, yes. Rewatch of Spaceballs. Yes. Yes. Live, we should um, live stream a watch party. Watch party. I would. I'm, I'm yeah, in for that. Definitely. Um, right. But yeah, that was cool. It was cool to see that ship, that 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 style of imperial ship too. Oh, dude. Know. Yeah. That was a. Uh, it was neat. Well, you know, again, it's just like the only thing that bothers me, guys, is that as a collector, you know, um, you know, just a just a, just a, <laughs> a minor rant as we wrap up. Um, you know, the, 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 I, my collecting is changing, you know, and evolving. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm looking through and I'm actually getting ready to getting ready to unload, yeah. um, and to thin out. Um, I still do some collecting, but I haven't been picking up all the figures that have been coming out only because, you know, prices are going up and up and up. And it's, you know, there's some figures I have absolutely no connection with like ones that are from video games and things. But when I see this show, I do want to get characters, to add to my collection from the show. And there are some that are coming out, but then I see the ships and I'm like, Oh, in the old days, I just, I'm, I'm nostalgic for the sixties and sixties, seventies and eighties when they would, you know, like you knew a ship was coming. You knew Luthen's ship would be a playset ship that would be, you know, yeah. up for sale the next year. And, you know, we just, we just don't, do it. it doesn't happen anymore. It's just gotten too expensive for them to make. And, and they just don't make them. So, yeah. yeah, I just look at it and go, oh, you know, th- th- or they make smaller ones, you know, like more micro size or whatever, which is fine. Yeah. But, you know, I just, yeah. I, I love that. But anyway, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. We'll see how, we'll see how the season yeah, ends. Yeah, we will. Uh, next week, uh, we will be, uh, yeah. yeah, next week. Talking about the yeah, episode. Yeah. So uh, really quick before um, we wrap up, oh. I, have you guys seen uh, the Studio Ghibli mashup with Lucasfilm, the Zen the, Grogu? Yes, the, the Zen um, Grogu. It is, I, it is so adorable. It's a, it's oh. absolutely adorable. It's only like a minute long. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, if, you, if you if you subscribe to StarWars.com, um, I believe it's on there, and it'll okay. come up on your feed. Okay, but it is adorable. It's, it's also on. It's also on uh, Disney Plus. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, um, okay, good. it's like it's like two or three minutes, something like that, but, but from beginning to end. But I play it for my son, my, uh, and he absolutely loves it. Uh, it's one of those one of those videos because it's very calming, and he just yes. by the time he's done watching whatever, if it, uh, if I turn it on while he's getting really you know uh, uh, hyped up about something, and I turn it on, he calms down because he's watching it. I think it's a mix of the music and the animation, and and then he's fairly good after that. So nice, cool. That's that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, before we wrap up, um, I we have a little house cleaning to do uh, here. As you might have noticed, the last couple of weeks uh, we have not been live streaming. Um, we are not going to be doing any more weekly live streams just because with the new recording system that StreamYard is having, it makes it a whole lot easier to record straight from here. 
there other than to live stream. We might still do some live streams here and there uh, for special occasions, stuff like that. Uh, but um, that is, um, we're not going to be doing just weekly live streams like we were. So if, if you were checking out our live streams, we're, we apologize for that. Uh, but we will still be posting them on Facebook, our Facebook group. We'll still be posting the shows on all our social media platforms, um, including we're going to start putting up the video on e our YouTube page. Uh, as soon as I get that cleaned up, we'll be putting that back. And um, we might as well put take the cat out of the bag. Uh, will has kind of hinted around at it, but we've not made any official announcements yet. But uh, next week will be Will's last show with us as a permanent host. Um, Tear. Yes. Tears. Sad. <laughs> we, are, we, we will definitely miss Will. He's been a great, um, great addition to the show. He came in on a time when, honestly, we really needed a co-host. Um, we had lost our other two co-hosts. I'd lost my other two co-hosts. Uh, they've had to step down for various reasons and we were looking and he was able to step in and he's done a great job. Uh, he will still be around every once in a while. He has uh, said he'd be more than willing to come in as a special guest, but just personal reasons and things going on, uh, he's not able to uh, do yeah. it on a weekly basis. So yeah, there's just a lot. There's just a lot for the people, you know, anybody who watches and listens, who knows me, knows that uh, what you know the, the kind of life I lead and yeah. uh, it's just it, it just you know coming out of covid uh, there was nothing going on but now you know we're pretty much over that what's yeah. covid you know and now we're back to normal and my, my you know the life yeah. I lead now has gotten more complicated with a lot of other things nothing bad no, I will say that no. I don't want anybody to think that I'm suffering from any kind of illness or anything I'm doing great yeah. Just and as a we, lot of, you know we just, also want to do this so that people didn't think that there was some sort of you know, something between between you know us that there was bad blood. You know, no. we, we wish them, you know, oh. wish you the best, Will. But uh, me and Garrett will carry on, and and carry you guys will do awesome, I'm sure. And I'm, I hope, yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, think you will so. absolutely. You guys are gonna be great, Garrett. Garrett brings a lot of awesome perspective to the programming yeah. and uh yeah. and i and i do and i do like having to get the opportunity to talk with you guys and i do hope to be to be in from time to time it just sure, it's it just hard to commit to the weekly thing for, yeah. well, for yeah, maybe you can give us a uh, a wrap up after your uh oh that's gonna happen but even before that i hope yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You can count on a on a Halcyon talk. Yeah. Um, but definitely. but I but I'd like to also you know get in on um, if there's any discussion. On, I'm trying to think of like when Mandalorian comes out. I don't know if I can commit to every week uh, episodes, but maybe just you know like a like a wrap up or the first episode or something like that. So we'll we'll talk yeah, about definitely, it. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, well, um, why why don't you tell us then, Will, uh, where people can find you at? Well, now and you will be able to continue to find me on YouTube, the Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing <laughs> channel on YouTube. And uh, kind of my, my favorite time of year is the holidays. And there's all such a great holiday stuff that I kind of do on, on the channel, a little bit different, um, that I'm looking forward to uh, sharing out with all of you. And you can find me there. You can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba, Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. And you can email me, Darth Tuba 77 at gmail.com all right and garrett where can people find you at well you guys can find me on uh, instagram and twitter at gkj underscore publishing uh, i'm constantly on there doing stuff i just actually did a reveal for the cover art for my new book which will hopefully be coming out by the end of this year or early part of next year uh, you can also find me on uh, youtube gkj publishing um, where I do um, all sorts of different videos. I do uh, weekly or monthly uh, top 10 recommended books, uh, author interviews. This next Saturday coming up, uh, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I'll ha I have a new uh, set of world building creative writing tips for anybody who uh, wants to learn about world building uh, for my creator's corner segment. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. As for right here, you can... Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, of course, you can email us 
The email address is waroftheStars1 at gmail.com. Uh, you can also check us out on all our social media platforms. Twitter is at War of the Stars one Go to our Facebook group. Just type in War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. We are on YouTube. As always, you can check out some of our old shows. And as I said, we will be putting up the uh, video version of that. So make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, you can also check us out on Instagram. Again, War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. You can check us out wherever fine podcasts are heard. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor.fm. Uh, just check those out. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, remember to give us a five-star review. It goes a lot, long way to helping us out on the channel. If you want to support the show, patreon.com forward slash War of the Stars. As I said, we got some big plans coming up in the next year uh we plan on rolling out i plan on rolling out those ideas that i have uh after the holidays are over um but uh check those out get ready for those big announcements on patreon or you can go and check out our merch store at um spreadshirt Spreadshirt.com. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember my name. Yeah. Uh, .com forward slash shop forward slash war of the stars. Uh, check out the cool merch we have there. As always, we are also, a, remember, a part of the Red 5 Network. Red5network.com for all the information on all the shows um, on the Red 5 Network. Uh, cool bunch of guys. Great bunch of guys there. Uh, and that is about it. It, as always, remember, this is not just my Star Wars. This is not just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the Force be with you. Till the Spires, everyone. This is the way.